are, it's fine. Um, so we're covering a few things in this lecture. Everyone here already knows the rules, right? We discussed it yesterday. You know what the debate looks like. We won't really go up into detail about the rules. Our focus on this session will be on motion analysis. So under, because you can be given so many different kinds of topics. So what do you do with different topics? If something is worded as this house would versus this house regrets versus this house should, these are different debates, the burdens are different, we'll talk about that, right? So we'll talk about motion analysis and then we will talk about speech structure, a little bit about what to do when you know nothing, and then we'll do exercises. Hopefully we have time. All right. So everyone understands now what a motion is, right? It is the topic to be debated. So last night, the motion for the restaurant is, this house prefers a world where nobody believes in the afterlife. Sometimes, motions come with information slides. Sometimes they don't. Do you know what an information slide is? No. What is it? Information slide is... Uh, 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 I don't know. No, it's okay. Fine. So an information slide sometimes is additional information that's provided that defines the terms in the motion or gives you additional context. So sometimes the people giving the motion are worried. They're like, maybe people don't know enough about this that we will just provide the context so that everyone knows what the debate is about. That doesn't always happen, but sometimes it happens and there's an information slide. So uh, I'll, I'll give you an example. You probably encounter an example in this tournament. So if there's an information slide before the motion, you assume that everything in the information slide is true, right? You assume that as part of the debate. If there's no information slide, then it's just a motion, and you just uh, define that motion. Um, have you heard of the term fiat? Yeah, uh, out. Ah. Huh? <laughs> yeah, out. Ah. Uh, Sorry. I don't want to the uh, so, Huh? Car. Yeah, car. car manufacturer. Oh, okay. From Italia. <laughs> so this is a different kind of Fiat. <laughs> Fair enough. So Fiat is basically you have the government side has the power to do something. So if we give the motion, right, you have to assume that the motion will happen. So for example, just bear with me, the debate is this house believes that uh, the United States should invade <coughs> Iran. I mean, this is a really bad idea, but the U.S. should invade Iran. On the opposition side, you cannot argue this will never happen. I mean, because you have to accept that it will happen in order for you to be able to have a debate. Because if everything you say on the opposition side is this will never happen, this will never happen, then how, then how are we going to have the functional debate, right? So by fiat it means the proposition side has the power to say that the motion is going to happen. Does it mean it will be successful? Does it mean it will be good? No. That's up for the debate, right? So you can challenge whether it's a good idea for something to happen. You can challenge whether it will benefit people, but you have to accept that it will happen. And then you, you have the debate that way, right? So on opposition side, it's not valid to say the motion will not happen. You assume it will. Okay. What about context? Can you send all the debates in Croatia? Can you just talk about Croatia or Serbia or things like that? No, right? You always assume that the debate is taking place within a functional democracy. It doesn't have to be a perfect democracy, but at least a functional democracy. So whenever people go, but this is not going to happen in Saudi, and we're like, well, most debates don't take place in those countries because it's the point of a debate is you have a parliamentary system where you can get stuff done, right? So you have to assume like a functional working context. Doesn't have to be a Western liberal democracy, but a functional democracy. All right. Now let's uh, Those are all the things I said. Now let's start, let's talk about um, the first type of motion, which is the most basic policy motion, right? So this house, it's usually worded as this house would. Um, so an example, this house would ban cigarettes. I'm pretty sure you already like that. But basically, you are imagining that you're in the parliament of a country, 
and the question is whether we should do the policy, right? So you assume the motion will pass. So, you, so opposition cannot vote, this is never going to happen. You assume it will happen. And then you can talk about like a policy. So you can say by banning cigarettes, this is what we mean, this is how we define cigarettes, this is what's going to happen to people who break the ban. So you have a policy. Or for example, this house would grant citizenship to undocumented immigrants, for example. That's a policy debate. So you have to propose a model. You have to go, oh, they must have not committed violent crimes and they must have been able to work in the country for X number of years. So that's a policy, right? <clears throat> Next type of motion is an analysis type of motion. There are several examples of this. So this house believes that. This one example. This house supports. That's what the S is for. Or this house opposes. That's what the O is for. Um, so let's say the motion is this house believes that gay pride parades do more harm to the gay community than good. You're just analyzing the values here. Does it help or does it hurt? You're not proposing anything. You are not proposing to ban gay pride parades. You're not proposing a policy. So the other side cannot say, oh, but they have a right to gather. And you're like, yeah, of course they have a right to gather. I'm not trying to ban them. I'm just trying to say that they are not being strategic in how they are using this right. OK? Yes. Yeah. Can you repeat uh, uh, this, uh, this house? So this house supports. believes that. Believe that. This house supports or this house opposes. So this house believes that gay pride parades do more harm than good. It's simply a belief, right? We're debating about what we should believe. We're not banning anything. So have you heard of the Belt and... Uh, I'm just going to say Belt and Road. I is wrong there. Have you heard of the term Belt and Road? China's Belt and Road policy? Uh, so China... So it's not BNI, it's... Uh, so, ignore BNI. Uh, that, is, that stands for Belt and Road Initiative. So China has this global policy of like trading with countries around the world and then like lending them a lot of money so that their economies become intertwined. So China is lending a lot of money to Pakistan, to, even to Italy recently, to allow them to build a lot of infrastructure. I think they're trying with Croatia as well. Yeah. So this is part of like a grand like Belt and Road. China dom hegemony domination plan, right? Now, the motion is this house supports or opposes the Belt and Road Initiative. So you're not proposing to do anything, you're just saying it's a bad idea, right? So, in order to support it, you might say, oh, these countries, they really need the capital to build infrastructure, it's really helping them, this is good. Opposes, you can say, these debts are going to be very hard to pay later on because uh, China is very, uh, it's not very responsible when it lends money and if you are not able to pay, it takes away national territory um, or it uh, insists on using their own Chinese citizens to work as laborers and the jobs don't go to your own citizens. So these are some examples of reasons why you might support or oppose something. Okay. I don't know. Sorry. <laughs> no, laptop. Sorry. Ah, sorry. Here. This is what happened to us last night, right? This house prefers a world in which. So this is another type of analysis motion. So we're, we're already in analysis once, not policy now. So this house prefers a world in which all people have superpowers. See, the question simply is, do we agree that this is a better world, right? Now, the opposition, like Milos said last night, has to defend the status quo. Because otherwise, there will be so many debates happening. So if I say, I prefer a world where people have superpowers, on the opposition, you're supposed to say, no, I prefer a world where people do not have superpowers, right? You cannot say, oh, I prefer a different one, where only the good people have superpowers. Because if you allow that, if we allow that in debating, then we'll never really know what the comparative is, right? We'll never really know what you're comparing. Um, so in a this house, if the motion is worded as, as this house prefers a world, you are not proposing a policy, 
nothing is being banned, nothing is being done, you're just evaluating, <coughs> kind of like a thought experiment, and the opposition side has to defend the present. Right now, they cannot defend like another fantasy makeup make up world. That is the proposition to do that. <coughs> Next up, uh, we're another type of analysis motion. So this house believes that X, X is an actor, should do something. So if the motion is worded as a should, it's not a necessarily a policy debate, but you can suggest that you support specific policies. So, for example, the US should invade Iraq. Is this a good idea? From the perspective of a neutral observer, from the perspective of the average reasonable person, is it a good idea for the US to invade Iraq? Probably not, actually. But <laughs> I assume this is your motion, right? Um, so there is a policy here that you are debating, but you're not actually proposing the policy. You're just going to say, if the US does this, it will probably have allies to, to, to do it with. It will not do it by itself. It will probably um, like first give conditions to the Iraqi government, and if the government doesn't meet it, then we will invade. So there's like, you're defending a version of the policy that is reasonable, right? But ultimately, the question is, should they do it? Um, okay. But I think we are on to the last, last two types of motions. This one. The regrets motion. Have you heard this before? This house regrets something. So for example, this house regrets the belief uh, in hard work. Or this house regrets the emphasis on hard work. Or this house regrets um, the belief that doing good things will lead to good things for yourself. Or this house regrets the belief that motherhood is uh, beautiful. Or something like that. Or this house regrets the idealization or the glorification of motherhood. Right? So you're regretting something. Does that mean you're banning it? Again, no. You're simply regretting it. It's simply a thought experiment that you are doing, right? Now, in a regrets motion, what you are doing is, you are, it's an exercise in imagination. So you're imagining that the thing that you are regretting, what will the world look like if it doesn't exist? Or what will the world look like if it doesn't happen? Why is that world a better world? So are you guys familiar with hookup culture? The term. So it's basically a term used to describe a phenomenon where people are more likely to engage in sex and physical intimacy without like much like emotional connection. So like this whole dating, a new version of dating, which is like a lot more like physical and like less traditional in terms of expectations from both parties. So you're saying you regret the rise of hookup culture. So you kind of regret Tinder and Grindr and, and all of these apps as well. So you have to imagine an alternate world, right? So you're going to go without these applications and without the hookup culture. This is what the world would have looked like. This is why we regret this world. This is why we would have preferred this other world. So you have to show what the world would have looked like without that thing. But when you are doing this, you have to be fair, right? You don't assume that without this thing, the world would have been perfect. Like you have to accept, okay, without these apps, it might have been harder to find people, it might have been harder to find dates, we accept that, but we think it would still have been better for the following reasons. So it's not like you pretend that the world would be perfect. So if you say, without hookup culture, everyone would be engaged in deep, meaningful, long-term, and happy relationships. And I'm like, that's not a very fair assumption to make. So the account, we call the term counterfactual or comparative. So the counterfactual just has to be a bit reasonable. Can you compare them? What is a counterfactual? So you have a fact, like the world as it is now. This is what we've done. This is a set of decisions we've made. The counterfactual is, what, what was the alternative? What could have happened otherwise, right? A counterfactual. So that's what you're defending in a regrets motion. You're like, if we did not have this, 
the counterfactual would have been this, and this would have been better. But when you're choosing a counterfactual, like I said, you also have to be reasonable. Don't be like sneaky and try to pretend that the counterfactual is perfect. Because if you see the other side is going to go, no, that's not, and, and you will fight about the counterfactuals, right? Because the other side will go, huh, without hook up culture, that's not what would have happened. This is what would have happened. All these other worse things, actually, and we are better off with this thing. So the way you choose your counterfactuals and the comparisons, you need to do it carefully. Uh, do you have any questions? No. Okay. We'll do a regrets motion for practice, I think, so that you can realize how this, how this plays out. Okay, we're in the last type of motion. Um, the last type of motion is an actor motion. You have to be very careful and when you look at how the motion has been worded. So if the motion is worded as this house as X should do something, that's very different to saying this house should do something, right? So if you're saying as X, the perspective now is not a neutral observer. The perspective now is the actor. So there's a very big difference between saying this house believes that parents should send their kids to private school because if you word it that way, parents should send their kids to private school, we're evaluating it as neutral observers. But if you word it as this house, this house as a parent would send your kids to private school, the question on the debate is why would the parent want to do this? And purely about the parents. Right? So even if someone says, but if, parent, if as a parent you send your kid to private school, then that's worse for other kids who cannot compete with your kid and you're like, why should I care? I'm the parent. Right? So that changes the actor. Of course, it doesn't mean that because that debate is about an actor only and the interests of that actor, that doesn't mean you can never make moral arguments. You can. But you just have to show that the moral arguments apply to that actor, right? Like, why is it in the interest of parents to be moral? As opposed to um, just assuming that parents inherently want to be moral, right? So is it clear? There are some debates, if it's worded from the perspective of that actor, you only care about that actor. So for example, there's a motion that says, um, this house believes that China should continue uh, banning, or this house as the Chinese government, right? So this house, as the government of China, would continue to ban access to Facebook and Gmail. So the opposition side, you cannot say, this is bad because your citizens have a right to information. You're like, I don't care. As a government, my duty, my interest is to preserve my power. So unless you can show me that giving them access to Facebook helps with preserving my power, it's a good thing that I don't give my citizens access to Facebook, right? So the morality assumptions that you make in an actor debate are different. Only <coughs> assume that the, the, the criteria or the standard for judging the debate is what will help that actor. So the first question you ask yourself when you see the motion is, what are the interests of this actor? What do they want, right? Uh, and how does the policy help them get what they want? So sometimes you will be making arguments that are not very moral and actually that are quite selfish, right? Like, how will this actor stay in power? How will this actor, like, gain more money? That's fine for an actor debate, but obviously for other debates, you're arguing from the perspective of the average reasonable person. Do you have any questions about types of emotions? I know this is a lot to digest, so it's just giving you a sampling so that you don't get a shot when you see a motion that's worded in a way that's not familiar to you. Alright, um, I will skip that for now. Yeah, so we're okay. Yeah. We're, we're good here. I will turn over to Vanessa to talk about uh, Veronica to talk about speech structure. And then we will briefly talk about what to do when you know nothing and hopefully we'll have time for a couple of drills. I just have a question. Sure. This, this house regrets and this house prefers, those are similar? And they are quite similar. That yes. you would say what is better as opposed to it being perfect? Yes. Okay. Yes. So in both debates you are comparing. 
So in a world where this house prefers, it's a bit cleaner actually because you're like, this house prefers a world where you know what you're defending and the other side is like, no, this house prefers this world now, right? So that's what you're comparing. In a regrets motion, you have to do a bit more guessing because you have to be like, this house regrets this, in the absence of this, this is what we would have. And the opposition is like, mm, that's not a good thing, yeah, we'd rather this, what you were saying we should have is not a very good thing. Or, actually, that's not exactly what would have happened, something else would have happened. So in a regrets motion, there are more steps in terms of figuring out what, the, what you're comparing. Whereas in a prefers motion, it's just quite clear. Okay, let's do this. I won't have a presentation, so take notes. I will be talking about the speech structure, how you should take notes, when you start your prep time and how you should deliver the, the whole speech so it happens to be as clear as possible for the judge to follow. You can be messy, but that goes bad for you, of course, because the main point in the debate is that the judge understands everything you want to deliver. So, first of all, I will be talking about the Prime Minister speech. That is quite different from the other speeches. That is the only difference in the structure. So first of all, as a Prime Minister, you need to present us with the problem. If you have a practice uh, motion, you have to present the, mo uh, the model, how you, what you're going to implement. And what cause do you want, what, um, see, see, goal. 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 what goal you want to uh, achieve with that model. So that is the first thing you have to deliver as the Prime Minister. And then you're going on your uh, positive arguments. Then you have to say, okay, my first three arguments will be on one, da -da 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 -da. on two, da -da 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 -da. on three. Da -da -da -da. That statement in the brief introduction should be as clear as possible and as rememberable as possible. So you need to have some uh, short or sentence or statement or compound of words that is rememberable and that is strictly connected to your argument of course. And that helps to the judge then when he sees the whole his notes that he knows what you were saying in your debate. Any questions? I see your shot in there. That, uh, can you repeat all this? As a prime minister, what to read? Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. So you have to present what problem, what problem is. you want to solve. You want to solve uh, the model. If the motion requires a model, you uh, you will implement, and then the goal you want to achieve by implementing implementing that model. Okay. So you have that three three things. First, you have to do. Shortly and clear. After that, you have to say shortly, I will have my three positive arguments. One, two, three, and have a statement. Just say that. And then after that, you start. My first argument is, and you go to the whole uh, explanation, that we'll have uh, the whole workshop, how that works. Yeah. So that's the short for the PM speech. Everything clear on that? And I would propose, if you have time, in the end, just sum up everything you said in two or three sentences. Okay, today I presented you how we are solving, what problem we are solving in this way and only by uh, implementing this model we are achieving our goals in this three, uh, how I explained, with these three arguments. Fine? Any questions? Similar, uh, except for the BM, <coughs> similar. So first of all, you have. I would propose to say, okay, I will have few points of free battle. I think Sharmila explained you. So you have few points of free battle on the previous speech, and then you say, I will have my uh, three positive arguments. And again, you have three statements that you explain shortly. 
after that you do your revival. So you start uh, we I don't know. Sorry? After that. So you have rebattle and three statements. And then after that you start with your rebattle. You start with your rebattle and then you go to your positive arguments. And you explain them the whole structure how it goes. And how do you spell rebattle? Rebattle or uh, yeah. R E B U T T A L. Yeah. We will post a presentation later. So that's for whole speeches. You have to be also, don't uh, spend more than one minute and a half on rebuttal as most speeches. You have to clearly state all the arguments after that. Um, and again, after every speech, I would propose if you have time to do a sum up of everything. So, okay, I presented you today with these three arguments that uh, opposes over everything that the government said and that's why we stand and that's why we are opposing this motion. Okay? So, uh, I think Sharmila explained to you that if you are whips, you have a different, different role in the whole debate. You don't present positive arguments. You can't present anything new into the debate. That's the role of your extension. So the extension has to present all new arguments. You can only back up what your extension has said. In that way we don't have a conflict because no one after the last week has the possibility of rebound. So as whips, you go uh, the main cause, uh, the main goal as a whip is to back up your extension as more possible. I would propose to, I don't know, say few times as my partner stated, uh, as he stated few times or something like that. Uh, and you need to prioritize, you need to see what, pa uh, what part of the opposition side was stronger of yours. And to attack as much possible with rebattle that side. So, as whips, you need to back, you have to dif uh, differentiate, differentiate uh, from your first part of the table, so you have two, 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 two. As a lower half of the table, you need, you can't backstab and say, this, uh, the first government of the fir or the first opposition uh, said was what they said was wrong, or too bad, or something. You need to say, even um, everything they said is true, it stands, but our is more important. Our is better explained, and our is more impactful in all the debate. And you need to be sure that you're stronger from the other things on the other side of the table. So you need to rebattle as much possible on that. As whips, you need to make uh, the whole debate clear. You need to point out the main clashes throughout the debate. You need to see what arguments was more, uh, more important throughout the whole debate. You don't need to attack every sentence they said. It's not important to attack everything. You need to prioritize what was strong from their speech. Again, with the sum up of the structure, you have, I will have today a few points of rebound, and then I will have my three positive arguments, or three, two, don't go above three, I would say. As the first half of the table, you can deliver two arguments as the first stages, and the second one more two or three if they have time. And as the lower ones, I want to propose to deliver more than three arguments. And as whips, also, um, that's it. Only you don't you don't have positive arguments. You have rebattle. You can have strict rebattle on the pre previous speech, and then in the uh, rest of your speech, you do uh, the power up of your extension and the rebattle on 
all the debates that happened. Any questions? That's fine. Uh, the sole structure of the argument, we'll have one lecture just dedicated to that. How you need to structure one argument in every speech. That's fine. Show me Okay. So some things I'm just gonna like add to this is why is structure so important in debating? Right? Why is structure so important? So remember that your judges are listening to eight speeches and you want them to remember what you're saying. So if your speeches are such a mess, it will be very hard to stand out, right? So eight speeches means so much material that they have to weigh and compare. So you want to help them by structuring and organizing your content in a way that's easy to follow and easy to remember. So that, that, that is part of why structure is so important. So when you're writing an essay for classes, you have to write, you have a part where you do the introduction, you do the body, and then you do the conclusion, right? Debating is very similar to that. So as you heard, um, you, you highlight first the things you're going to say, and then you say it, and then you remind people of what you've said. So this is the whole, like, you give them the titles of your arguments before you explain your arguments. That's kind of like writing a paper. So one term we use for that, it's not very common in this region, but in, in Asia, we call it signposting. Signpost. So it's like when you're driving on the street and you see signposts that are like, stop, go. So signposting is basically, tell them what you will say, say it, tell them what you said, right? So outline what you're going to say, and you're just going to say, in summary, this is what you will, you can expect from me in this speech, these are my arguments, and then argue them, and then conclude. So rebuttal follows the same structure. Rebuttal is basically when you respond to the arguments on the other side, and you prove that they are wrong. You will have a workshop specifically on rebuttal. So you also outline the things you're going to say in rebuttal, spend some time, and then move on to your arguments. So that way, as a judge, I'm taking down notes, I can see the flow of your speech. And if you give me clear titles for your argument, I will just look at the title and I'll remember. But if you are confused and a mess, and then I have to like make sense of this, that hurts you in the round, right? It also helps when you're telling me what you're responding to on the other side. So in your rebuttal, you're like, so here I'm dealing with the stuff that was said in the second speech, or in the third speech, so that I can also track, right? Do you have any questions about structure? No. Okay. Can uh, you yeah. just repeat what you recap uh, what uh, Veronica said? Uh, so first you uh, say what you want to say, then you argue the sentence, yeah. and then what's the last? Tell them what you said. Just re yeah. repeat and sum up. Yes. Okay. So tell them what you will say. Say it, tell them what you said, right? Um, just so it's clear and they, re they remember. Um, let's do a very quick discussion of what to do can be done with the other one. When you think you know nothing about the motion, but let's not spend too much time on this because I want to do some business. <coughs> Parts of the world that you are not familiar with. 
So I'm sure you can tell me a lot about Croatia, you can tell me a lot about Europe. So try to read about the parts of the world that you don't know, right? So some of it is preparing also. Um, what if you're 15 minutes and you're like, we're not really sure what this motion means? One suggestion I have is you as teammates, maybe you can give each other like three minutes just to think uh, on your own instead of like talking and panicking. And then, like you do a word cloud, so you write down the word and you go, what do I know about this? What else do I know about this? What else do I know about this? What do I know about China? What do I know about, so like last time, what do I know about the afterlife? Which religions follow it? How do they do it? So like just do some quick brainstorming. Uh, let's go with that. Uh, you don't have to have all the facts. I know people are like, I don't know anything about this. It's not really facts that win the debate. It's analysis, right? It's what you do with the facts. So don't freak out if you don't know the facts. Listen to your opponents as well, because sometimes you can use their facts against them, right? Um, and then ask yourself, what can I guess about this? Like, why would the... Like, remember we said, what is the problem that you're solving? Like, why would they... Why is this topic being given to us? Why should we care about this topic? There must be a problem behind it, right? So you make some educated guesses about that. And then you ask yourself, what do I need to prove here? Like, usually, like, once you have the answer to this, you are on track, right? You look at the topic and you go, what do I need to show here? So last night, this task refers to a world where nobody believes in the afterlife. You just go, hmm, what do I need to demonstrate here for this to be, um, for me to win. So I guess you can show that people will actually lead better lives, people will be happier with themselves, people will care about other people more if they didn't believe in the afterlife. So you're like, these are the things I need to prove. How do I prove that? Ah, maybe the belief in the afterlife means people are willing to accept suffering in this life because they're like, oh, maybe in the afterlife you will get your reward and you will get your justice. But what does that lead us to do? leads us to be more willing to tolerate suffering of people in this life because we think they will be rewarded. That's a bad thing. Belief in the afterlife, if that doesn't exist, then we will feel that we have only this life. Or I don't know, like you make the link, right? But ask yourself, what do I need to prove here? Um, and then work from there. Okay. If some words in the motion are not clear, you can ask uh, the trainers or the CAs for clarification. So in tournaments, you can only ask the chief adjudicators. You cannot ask your own coach. So you have to ask the people with the tournament. And they are allowed to define the words for you. They are allowed to give you the meaning of the words. Of course, they cannot give you arguments, but they can give you the meaning of the words. Um, sometimes, you listen to the motion, you already know what the comparative is. The comparative is the other side. So like last night, when you hear the motion refers to a world where nobody believes in the afterlife, you know that the other side is where many people believe in the afterlife, right? Like that's obvious. Um, and like I said, how do you kind of infer what the idea behind the motion is? Like if the motion is this house believes that the U.S. should invade Iraq, you go, what usually is the reason for invading countries? Is it because these countries are a threat? to other countries? Is it because these countries are harming their own people? Yeah, but you probably shouldn't say that because you are arguing from a neutral perspective, right? So you're like, normally, when do we intervene? We intervene when there's a threat or when people are being abused. So that might be the reason in this case, right? Okay. Let's just drop that. Okay, your case. Uh, this is okay. They'll discuss it in a future workshop, not yet. So, creating context really matters here. So, for example, um, based on what you know, so like I was saying about invading countries, that's a good starting place. So, if you encounter a motion, this house believes that the U.S. should invade Venezuela, or this house believes that the international community should militarily intervene in Venezuela, and you're like, what do I even know about Venezuela? And then you take a step back and breathe, and you're like, in the past, when did we invade countries? We invaded them when they were oppressing their own people. 
when dictators refuse to give up power. And you're like, maybe something like that is happening in Venezuela, right? So the president, you don't have to know his name, his name is Maduro. So the president is refusing to give up power. And they held elections, but it was, uh, he did not respect the results of the elections, and the elections, there's a lot of cheating. So you're like, we need to invade because the government is not democratic, and we need to ensure that free and fair elections are held, because otherwise this government will abuse their people. And then you know, right? In Venezuela, there probably is a lot of suffering. Then you can guess that there's high, high some of you will know that there's a lot of inflation, and that um, there's a lot of hunger, and uh, the economy is collapsing. So you can guess some of these things, because otherwise, like, why are we asking you to invade Venezuela, <laughs> right? So you can make some of these, like, beginning from shared experiences and things you know, and to build up these educated guesses. Um, okay, can we go on from there? So when you say Israel should abandon conscription, what does this imply? It means that in Israel now we have conscription. Do you know what conscription is? It's when uh, the state forces its citizens to serve in the military. So you don't have a choice, you are forced. Right? You are either forced to be part of the reserve, or if there's a war, the state is, like, orders you to fight, and you don't get to say no. That's conscription, and Israel has that. The argument is because they, that Israel argues that it is surrounded by threats in the Middle East, and it needs to protect itself, and the existence of its state. So if you see this motion, if the word conscription is not clear to you, go and ask the trainers at the CAD. We are like, what is the definition? We are allowed to give that to you. So the, if the motion says, yeah, sorry. So um, here we can argue how this would benefit people. It would be, we should argue how it would benefit like Israel as the government, because it's as Israel. Yeah, correct? yes, yes. And you can say, yeah, and you can say it's not good for the state to be ordering people to do this. Uh, here are all the effects. Um, it's more of uh, how, what kind of effect would this have on the state as yes. opposed to on the yes, people. Yes, yes, yes. You can also argue the effect of the people as long as you connect it back to mm -hmm. how it affects the state. state. Yeah. yeah. And um, from this motion, you can guess if you're asking a, a, some, an actor to abandon something, that they are currently doing that something, right? And you can also assume that there are some harms to it. So these are like step by step guessing that you do based on the motion. All right. So, okay, during the debate. So the debate is now happening. You still don't know a lot. You're panicking. What moves can you play? Okay, let's see. You just have to be brave during the actual round. Um, Listen to the arguments of the other side, try to reduce their impact, try to show that it's not as bad as that they are saying it is, or that their, their views are quite exaggerated, um, and then compare your material versus theirs and go, but we have also proven this to you, um, they haven't really like dealt with it, um, and then show uh, why your material is important. I mean, this is not a guarantee, but the goal is to not give up and to keep putting up a fight, right? Um, the other thing is using context matters, like what's happening around the world that might be relevant to this debate. So if the motion is the central bank should increase interest rates, so basic, like basic economics, if you increase interest rates, it is more expensive now to borrow money. Oh no, what does that mean? It means it will probably slow down the economy, slow down businesses, slow down spending, because it's, it's harder to borrow now, right? Which means you kind of force people to save money. Why are we doing this? Why do we want this to happen? And then you can be like, ah, oh, maybe we have a credit problem right now. Maybe too many people are borrowing. Or maybe the economy might be overheating. Like things are happening too fast, and we don't have enough uh, safety measures in place. Uh, or preventive measures in place to prevent people from making rash financial decisions. So maybe we should like school down the economy first. So it's, it's just thinking about the context around. This is a very complex motion. It's not very likely to come up in beginner tournaments, but just in case you encounter something like it, right? 
the impact it has on, on, on the soldiers themselves or on the country? Both. Both. Which one would be the impact on the country? Um, for example, the view on war. You mean arguments? Yes. Uh, the view that people have on war, the way that children are taught, okay. or perspective that people have. Yeah, okay. they're easier to draw into one more. Okay, for example, violence, it's okay, it's okay. not okay in um, in the city, but in war, it's certain things are okay, because yeah. soldiers are heroes. It would be a fewer drafts in the military if they are not look, look upon as heroes. Because a lot of uh, young little men are going to the army because of the promises they will become hero of their country. So what side is this for? Proposition or opposition? Proposition. Yeah. Yeah. How would you... It's history for the country. Sorry? Uh, and the heroes can make the history for yes. the country. So. Also, it affects how you view history, right? If you are heroes... Is the opposite of this that we are talking about? We're still in the proposition yeah. side. So we don't want to see them as heroes. If you have heroes, you also have villains and enemies, right? And if you think of your soldiers as enemies, it becomes easier for you to not notice the abuses that they commit against other people. Because you tend to think, no, my guy is a good guy, they're all bad guys. But that's exactly what happened in the Iraq war. Americans were like, our men are great. And uh, the soldiers committed so many abuses, but they were like, no, but, that, but those people are animals. Because if you think of someone as a hero, you usually compare that to a villain, right? And also, soldiers are like, they're great, they're heroes as long as they win. Yeah. So if they don't win, then they're not. Possibly. Then yes. they, they yeah. translate it to the... The pressure, so the pressure and the stress is also really, really high. Uh, yeah. Well, also, soldiers like, they're sold, they're done with heroes and everything, but once they're done uh, being a soldier, once they're a veteran, uh, there's not really that much support, especially for mental health issues. Yeah, because they are so, they're expected to be so brave, they're expected yeah. to be perfect, that no one considers that it is possible that these men have actually vulnerabilities, right? Okay, so these are things we explore in the proposition side. We're just exploring ideas, right? These are not the full arguments. You will have a lecture on building arguments. So on the opposition, what are you defending? They are heroes. Why is this important? Because it raises the morale of the country. Raises the morale of the country. What else? Yeah. It's, it motivates them to win more wars and to perform better in battle. Okay. So national strength and performance in wars. You said something earlier, right? You were like, young boys, if we treat soldiers as heroes, will be more willing to sign on to the war. In the proposition side, you can say this is a bad thing. Why? Because a lot of these boys, they don't realize how bad war is. Because they're just focused on like the hero figure. So that's how you show it's bad. But how do you show this on the opposition side? You can flip this argument, right? It's, it's it right. creates jobs, it creates a love for their country. It creates jobs. You need to recruit people. When they recruit, when they're in the military, they will learn discipline, yeah. they will so you Especially young boys in that age where they think they are vulnerable and they think that they can do everything, it's a good time to... Yeah. I think you go... No, it's a... Two things. One, a job in the military is not bad. Like, it gives them scholarships, it takes them into skills. But two, um, you want... It's not indefinite. Hi. Oh, sorry. I thought this was now. Exit. Paul. And the other thing is... Um, what if you are fighting wars? You do need to recruit soldiers. You, you do need to have men sign up to be soldiers. And if you don't have this narrative that they are heroic and that soldiers are morally superior, you're not going to have soldiers. Then how are you going to win your wars? How are you going to fight your wars? How are you going to defend your country? Right? So that's the whole like, if you are surrounded by enemies who are trying to take over your territory or who are threatening you, and you um, do not have people who to sign up to defend the country, that's weakness. So you flip that. And on the other side you're like, no, it might mean fewer wars, that's not a bad thing. Right? We don't want people to be in love with the idea of warfare. And then on the other side you're like, but some wars are necessary. And so that's a very interesting debate, right? Okay, I wanted to do the art thing, I said it's now 11. And uh, yeah, we yeah. have to use it. I, I will cut this. Your next trainer is supposed to come in. They're not.
not here. Right. But I'll let you bring 